But the key is feeling like I'm disingenuous. Along my journey, one of the most difficult things that I have tried to overcome and had to overcome is this idea that what I'm sharing or what I'm saying is somehow disingenuous. When you, when, when you follow a spiritual path for a very long time, you develop this ideology that the spirit uh, is, is out there. God is, uh, in essence, out there and, and you're here. There's this disconnect type of ideology that says this one here, the, the me, uh, a lot of spiritual people call this the flesh, that the flesh must die so that the spirit, this force, God, can operate through us. And I'll tell you, friend, I've lived with that ideology for a very, very long time. And what I'm finding is is that when I always take this subservient posture, when I always take this less than posture, I've had great moments where I, I know that God, spiritual force, the anointing is racing through me. I say through me. When I, when I say that, let me describe it this way. I've stood on stage before and have been preaching or speaking I've sat in living rooms uh, with with families and their loved ones dying and I'm talking to them, counseling with them. I've been in these moments of my life to where I feel this force that's beyond me. That's the best way I could describe it. There's a force that's beyond me. It's like this essence that passes through me. It, This voice speaks through me. All of a sudden I find myself saying things to this family, saying things to this audience, this group that are not, I don't have any notes, I, I don't have any formula or format, friend. I'm just there and there's something about the presence that I'm in that invokes this force, this God force, and out of my belly, as the scripture says, flows rivers of living water. Now, if I, I venture to say you've been there at a time in your life, maybe you didn't quite understand what was going on, but if you're an artist in any form, you know what I'm talking about. When you hit that note, you write that sentence, you paint that picture, that idea, that aha moment that flushes through you is the most remarkable experience that a human being could ever have. I believe that the feelings, I'm getting to believe this, the feelings that we feel, the rush that we have, the ideas that flow through our mind at that time, those ideas are the true, real us, the perfected us. It, it is, hear me, it is God, if you would, the force, but, but that force is not an outside thing, friend. That force is an inside thing. Jesus said this, that the kingdom of heaven is within. When you and I operate in that realm, when you and I operate in that zone, when we are one, when we are clicking, we have a tendency to believe that it wasn't me, but it was God. But I venture to differ with you, and this is the reason why, is because without you, God can't do anything. You and God are not separate. You and God are one. Now, regardless of what you call God, regardless of what you identify this force with, I'm telling you, that force and you are one in the same. The writer of the scripture says, I live and I breathe and I have my being in him. So in other words, when you are on, when you are in your zone, when your best pitch comes forward, when your best song gets sung, when your best design gets canvassed, when your greatest uh, uh, house gets built, whatever it is that your gifting is, friend, and, and let me pause and say this, that you are gifted. Whatever you do is a gift. Sure, you've developed a skill set to accentuate that gift, but what you do and who you are is a gift to the world. 
And every time you use your gift, you're relying on the God-created, God-ordained, anointed you to deliver that gift to the world. So I just wanted to encourage this morning, I, this all came on because I was dropping my daughter off for driver's training and I was making a note, I, I keep a journal in my phone, maybe something that you do or would like to do. I, I open up notes in my iPhone and I keep a journal and I head it 2016 and then every day or every moment thoughts come to me, I, I list them in there and then I can go back and I can reflect on them and I can learn from them and grow from them. And one of the things that I found myself writing down was you need to lose unworthiness and that's what I wrote down you need to lose the unworthiness because sometimes we can get into this zone of oh I'm so unworthy God just used me and, and we we have this ideology if I can just become less God will become more well friend I'm here to encourage you this morning that unless you become more you will never become more <laughs> Unless you become more, you'll never become more. And guess what? Unless you build a house, it ain't going to be built. Unless you grow the business, it ain't going to grow. Unless you forgive, forgiveness isn't going to happen. We, we develop, as, as spiritual people, we develop this ideology that the God that we serve, the one that we serve, is separate from us. And that's the whole point this morning, friend. You and your God, you and the force of the universe are not separate. You are one in the same so why is it then that I wrote, I wrote, I need to get rid of unworthiness? Because at that moment, unworthiness was in the forefront of my mind. Here it is. Unworthiness and worthiness are in you at the same time. Good, evil. Right, wrong. Good, bad. Accomplishment, failure. Success, failure. Here's another one. Fat, skinny. Here's a question for you. Where is the skinny person? <laughs> you know where the skinny person is? The skinny person is in the fat person. Come on, friend. But here's a reverse. Where is the fat person? The fat person is in the skinny person. Are you hearing what I'm saying this morning? The skinny person is in the fat person. When, when, when the fat person decides to be skinny, the fat person doesn't have to go outside of themselves. Oh my gosh, don't miss that. They don't have to go outside of themselves to find the skinny person and say, well, can I just become you? That's the same thing we do when we think that we have to go outside of ourselves to get God to come and do something for us. No, 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 friend. It's a misnomer. God is not outside. God is inside. The you that you desire to be is not outside. The you that you were created to be is inside. And what you have to do is you have to weed through the mindset. The mindset that's in the forefront of your mind will drive your life. I, I know you know what I'm talking about. You've woken up on a Monday or a Sunday or a whatever day it was and you felt most miserable. And you think you can't go to work, etc. The world's falling apart. And you get one email, one phone call, one text, and it changes your entire being. And all of a sudden, everything that was impossible is now possible. What changed? The only thing that changed, Fred, was your mindset, the way you saw it. So here's what I know. A lot of times when we think we're on, we think we're spiritually connected. God has not moved any closer to us. We have not moved any closer to God. Friend, you cannot get any closer to God than what you already are. You and God are one in the same. I in Him, He in me, the hope of glory. So as long as we separate ourselves from the solution that we seek, we will always be in need and we will live only momentarily. But if you and I are ever going to live consistently on, we must rid ourselves of this separation anxiety, this separation ideology, and we must realize ourselves to be the answer and the solution that we seek. The fat person cannot go outside of themselves and seek a skinny person outside of themselves because that skinny person does not exist. The fat person must begin to see themselves 
as the skinny person. And they will literally, friend, they will literally transform themselves from the inside out. The ideology will change, the emotion and passion will change, the action will follow, and they will become what they think about the most. Hey, wow. That is a lot to digest. I, I wrote in my note this morning, I must lose unworthiness. And I scratched it and said, no, I must find worthiness. Worthiness, unworthiness in the same person, me. God and flesh in the same person, me. My gift and me are one and the same. And friend, I'm speaking to somebody this morning that needs to hear you don't have any other thing to do, period. Just be who you are. Friend, if you're, if you're a paramedic and you're driving down the road and you see an accident and you jump out and you tell that person, hey, don't die, and you're looking through your paramedic manual trying to figure out what you're supposed to do, you're not ready yet. But when you know that you know that you know that when you open up your mouth, that song that God put in you is coming out and J-Lo's going to get goosies and the whole world's going to get goosies, that is the moment that you capture. That is your true essence. That is the essence that you live and breathe and have your being in. And friend, capture that essence, will you? Capture it in writing. Capture it on video. Whatever you have to do, capture those feelings. Almost bottle them. And when you feel this unworthiness feeling coming on, what I want you to do is I want you to open that bottle and I want you to shake that worthiness on you until you rock your world, until you rock your senses, until you see yourself in the gym, you see yourself sweating and working out, you see those abs, you see that body, you see that business, you see that you. You, you fought too hard for this, friend. You fought your entire life for this. Are you gonna let a thought keep you down? Are you gonna let a skewed perspective of God or a skewed perspective of humility keep you from your dream? I, I venture not. I don't know about you, but I'm not. And I, I've lived this for so long, friend, that, that I've beginning to see that the me that I desire to be is in me. There it is. You, the you that you desire to be is in you. It's in you. You are everything that you need to be right now. You can't be more freer than you are. <laughs> you can't be more wealthy than you are. You can't be closer to God than what you are. You can't be more of you than who you are. You just got to see it the right way. Unworthiness doesn't have to go away. Worthiness has to come to the foreground. Mm. Fat doesn't have to go away. Skinny has to come to the foreground. And whatever you choose to think on, that is what we will become, friends. So, wow. I hope this little video has helped this morning. I'm just driving around out with a morning coffee, and I just felt an urge to talk to you. Hey, I appreciate you following me. We've got all kinds of followers, and, and if you're not following us, check us out on Facebook. Check us out on Twitter. We're there. We're all over the place. And hey, if you're looking for somebody to come in and inspire your group, uh, maybe a workshop, a keynote, a sermon, you let me know. I'd love to come and be a part of your group. My, my job, my my life calling is to inspire you to be all that you've been designed and created by God to be. And I know we all have our journey, but I believe that I've been through a few things in my life that I help, uh, that I can help uh, others uh, get where they want to be in their life. So God love you, bless you, and I'll see you next time. This is Jeff Kroom, and I do approve this message, by the way. I'll see you again. Bye-bye.